Let's jump right into Visual Studio and start digging deep under the hood to understand SPDN Core security. So I'm using Visual Studio 2019 Community Edition and I'm about to create a SPDN Core web application. Right? You can come over here and do web app. Right, search web app and then you can see SPDN Core web, web application. Click on next. And so you basically enter your locations, project name and solution name, and then click on create. And what we are going to create is a SPDN Core web app. So this is going to be the Razor Pages application. This is not going to be model view controller because uh, right now Microsoft considers the Razor Pages solution as the primary solution. That's why in this course, I am using the Razor Pages uh, solution. So then without creating any authentication, let's click on the create and then we can start from scratch uh, without using any default setup for authentication so, so that we can understand the security, the identity aspects of, of SPDN Core completely. So I'm clicking on the create button. So now we have the application created. This is an intermediate course. Uh, I'm not going to go about and uh, show you uh, which file is what and how they all work together. I'm going to come to this diagram and we'll follow this diagram back and forth along these lines so that we can investigate each and every single step. So first of all, uh, we, are, we don't have a login page. Right? But we do have other pages where we're going to send requests and receive a response. So let's examine this, uh, this part first, because this part carries all of our security context. So this is the first part we're going to examine. So we have a index page, right? And we don't have any uh, protection on the page. So we should be able to just run without any problems. All right, so this page is loaded, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to set a breakpoint. And then I'm going back to the page. I'm going to refresh the page. Now my breakpoint is triggered. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to add something to look at. I'm going to examine the um, information under the page model of the Razor pages, which contains the data construct for Razor pages, which is pretty similar to MVC's data construct. And if we say base dot, and we can see all of the data construct, and one of them is user. And if you look cl uh, closely, you can see that this is the claims principle, which is the security context that I talked about in the previous video. The security context is under the user, right? Because it is the user principle. So then what is under there? And you can see that the principles can contain a list of identities currently it only has one and this is the primary identity this identity is the primary identity which is sort of like uh, in the first video when I talked about when you go into the military facility as a person you have many type of identities you have your driver's license you can have your employee card you can have your student card you can have everything you can even have a you can have a library card right but uh, the identity that is the primary identity is supposed to be the one that is provided to you by the military, right? So this identity uh, is our primary identity that our ASP.NET Core currently is working with, right? So if we go to that, we do dot identity, and then uh, we can see that it has uh, different informations here. Uh, the main information is claims, which doesn't have anything. And the reason is that this current identity is a anonymous identity. You can see that this is authenticated member is currently false. Why is it anonymous identity? Because I haven't logged in yet. I didn't touch any login page. In fact, we don't have a login page. So in this case, we're, lo we're actually uh, logging in quote unquote to this web application without any identity and this is still considered 
as a identity and this identity is the anonymous identity and that's why the is authenticated is false so in other words whether you logged in or not logged in once the http request goes into sp.net core sp.net core creates the the primary identity for you right? regardless whether you logged in or not and if you logged in then it will contain all of your security context right if it doesn't log in it will contain a anonymous identity which is still a security context but it's an anonymous one so this is the concept i would like you to understand that regardless whether you logged in or not you have a security context you have a primary identity under your security context.